And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? Hi, good morning. It's a real uh, a pleasure and honor to be here. I've been listening to your teachings for well over 10 years, and it's been a real benefit in my life. I've been, it's been a real blessing and really transformed my life, so thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of the teachings that I listened to over the years have been Abraham, but one of the other major spiritual teachings that I practice and, and learn from is Buddhism and Advaita, or non-dualism. I'm just curious, I've never heard you speak much about it, or especially the topic of enlightenment or non-duality, the teachings. I've gotten a lot out of them, but a lot of them they seem to contradict with some of the things you say. Well, and, uh, what is meant by non um, duality. Yeah, non-duality is that is this no self that you don't actually exist as a separate entity. That there's the one, there's the wholeness of everything, and that I am not a separate being. I am just a function of everything else. Well, we and are in agreement with that to this extent. You are an extension of that broader part, and when you think about it, everything that we're talking about is about helping you to release the resistance that has caused you to you might say egotistically separate yourself so that you can raise your vibration in order to blend with that broader you mm -hmm. you can't deny that you're here in this body right. and certainly a connection to that broader pure loving you is really to your advantage and the separateness is too strong of a word is created by self by choosing thoughts or behavior that separates is too strong a word but pinches you off from that broader part of you mm -hmm. in the early days as we began addressing you in this format through Esther we began talking to you about you here in this body and your inner being not to separate you but because most people we're not considering themselves from that broader point of view. So we began explaining that you are source energy and here in this body, you are an extension of that, you see. Mm, right. And so there is more harmony with this idea that you are projecting here than you might have realized. Yes? Right. I'm just trying to reconcile the teachings because I see how, how much benefit there are in both of them, but it, just on my, on my mind level, they seem like on a surface level, like they you know, jive is, There's uh, hardly anything that you could focus on from which you would not derive some benefit. Mm -hmm. okay. But you don't have to make everything exactly the same either, because while what we are teaching is at the basis of everything that is, everyone's not ready to hear it in the way that we are explaining it. And so this is what we would really like to say to you in a way that you can hear it most easily because we think this will reconcile for you more easily than anything else we might say about this topic when you are here in your physical body and you are exploring life and discovering things that you care about and you realize that your inner being is exploring right there along with you as you accept that there is more than just what you believe is your conscious personality but there is this broader perceiver that is within you and you are striving to understand what that perception is that puts you on the most solid and powerful footing one who's connected to that is more powerful than millions who are not mm -hmm. and so it is really something worth thinking about what about free will they talk about choicelessness so that there's ultimately it appears that there is a choice that you're making decisions but ultimately that's just an illusion and it's not actually the case well there has to be a misunderstanding in there somewhere because you are the creator of your own reality and while it is true that if you choose something that's really uncharacteristic of who you are if you choose to hate when you are a lover you feel the discord of that if you choose to diminish yourself or others when you are an uplifter you feel that but you're certainly without choice is not accurate mm -hmm. you've come to explore the variety in order to choose mm -hmm. you say they say that since you don't exist that is a separate entity like my functions are a function of the whole like um... 
Well, when since, we I, think, since I'm not actually separate from everything, everything I do, everything I think, is an extension of the so whole. The, so everyone's been pre-programmed before they got here. And, that's what they say. Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Okay. <laughs> if that's what they say, there's not a okay. shred of evidence to support that mm. anywhere in the universe. Someone, somewhere, is misunderstanding something okay. big time. I got it. <laughs> Just one of the one of the kind of no, the, the, the arguments or like one of the one of the, the teachings, one of the pointings from one of the, one of these teachers is like he he, he brings uh, uh, forward. You're so free, you can choose bondage. Right. That's exactly what his point was. Is was that why would anybody choose bondage if there was freedom? Like if I have freedom, wouldn't everybody choose happiness? Why would anybody choose to be unhappy? the example he gave was uh, yeah. we don't think anyone would choose unhappiness right. but we do know that you would choose thoughts that are resistant in nature and that deprive you of happiness so we don't think that you're deliberately choosing them we think some are choosing them by default because of momentum because there was a rumble strip that gave them awareness of it but there was enough momentum that they continue to choose it and continue to choose and continue to choose mm -hmm. until they were so chronically separated from their own well-being that then their well-being is diminished so there are a lot of people that are not consciously making those choices in fact they're consciously making choices that they believe are virtuous and upstanding they're choosing to push against unwanted there's a war against drugs and a war against crime and a war against terrorism and a war against cancer and a war against a war against and all of them are getting bigger because you get what you think about whether you want it or not so what is the question? I just wanted to hear your perspective on those teachings because they're quite clear in Buddhism that there is no self and uh, you know phenomena are choiceless you know that's really what they from what I understand maybe I'm not understanding well, things correctly we can see some harmony in what we are speaking about that because we are all the time wanting you to stop focusing upon things that hold you apart from who you are so that you can be who you are we are also knowing that as non-physical energy ourselves as our interest in who you are we're always focused right there with you that you are never really apart from any of us Esther really understood that when her dearly departed was not really so departed still interested and still present and still contributing and still part of it and so there is no real separation you cannot separate yourself really you can pinch yourself off pretty good and feel miserable in the moment but ultimately when you have your croaking experience we like to be disrespectful of death since there isn't any and you re-emerge into non-physical you will be vibrationally at one with who you really are right, so it's like a misunderstanding or like a lack of awareness that... what it is it's a taking of something that is known that has been translated by someone into a physical form where you can hear it and then someone else later trying to make it fit with what they are currently living and causing some distortion that's why we love it when our friend is receiving on his behalf we don't want him to take Esther's translational word for anything we want all of you to go directly to the source that you have access to and live the leading edge knowledge that the source within you is offering to you you see but as societies you tend to take these religions and what we are teaching is at the basis of all of them and then religion because religion has been so economically tied it is often distorted to serve someone's interest as it is moving along you see and so we could spend a lot of time comparing what we know to be with what a lot of others are teaching about a lot of things but it would not be very productive I'm just I was just curious yeah, yeah. What about enlightenment? I've never heard you, you talk about it. And from what I understand, it's a state of being where there's a resistance is completely gone. Like it just well, completely dis disappears altogether. We are using different words. We're uh -huh. calling it the receptive mode. Okay. Or we were calling it before that being in the vortex or before that tuned in, tapped in, turned on being in vibrational sync with who you really are. So that in the moment, the whole of who you are is having the conversation or having the experience or feeling. In other words, when you are feeling that 
incredible appreciation for something that's because of your absence of resistance and you're allowing the perspective of who you really are to be demonstrated by you in this moment you see so we don't use a lot of words from religious basis because they tend to not mean anything to you you hear a word like enlightenment and you just accept it as what you always thought it was which may be very different from what we mean it to be the word love most people when they use or hear the word love feel absence of it more often than they feel presence of it God is another one we don't use the word God unless you force us into a sentence because it makes you think things that we don't mean you see and so it is our expectation that as you feel the essence of what you've come to know from what you've been paying attention from the teachings that you've been hearing from us that you can feel a lot of similarities in a lot of things because humans have been extensions of source energy for a very long time in various degrees and various stages of resistance today upon your planet there is rampant resistance still and yet within those resistance stances then still trying to study and make sense of things that cannot even be understood at all when there is resistance that is present when we talk about your path of least resistance what we mean is every one of you to one degree or another has thrown resistance on your own path all resistance is self-inflicted no matter how it was inspired or promoted by those around you still a resistance stance is your own doing your own sort of self-inflicted doing but your inner being knowing where you stand with that resistance on your path and knowing who you really are and what you're asking for because what's in your vortex is clearly understood by source so your inner being is always calling you through your path of least resistance not condemning the fact that the resistance exists and not trying to push against the resistance but trying to show you even with the resistance how worthy you are and how well you can thrive you see what we're getting at S source is not standing in condemnation of one religion or another source is not standing in condemnation of one behavior or another the source within you only knows who you really are who you've really become and it's just guiding you continuously steadily constantly and lovingly toward who you really are and what you want to be which means sometimes you will be called into an awareness of a problem because once you focus upon the problem you begin asking for a solution you see what we're getting at so every religion no matter how deep its roots has modern day conversation happening within it you just can't go back and read what was written for people who were living in a different time under different circumstances with a whole different pile of resistance on their path that's why we're encouraging you to tune to your own guidance to your own knowing which is present about the path you're walking on today you see yeah digging up those old books might be fun and interesting but it's guidance that was written for someone else in another time you have your own guidance today and we are not claiming to be it we're guiding you to that which it is mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Enough? Yes. Yeah. Really good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.